Hi guys, um, welcome to the channel. Uh, quick question. When is the best time for Warhammer to drop a an FAR? Well, it would seem two days before a really big community tournament. Uh, this past Saturday, I, um, for some reason, entered my steel hearts into a vassal tournament, which uh, was massively shaken up by the introduction of a new FAR list. So um, it's kind of discuss how I got on in the tournament and uh, have a, a quick kind of sneak peek at, um, well, what the meta was that weekend anyway. But um, yeah, let's break it down. Okay, so um, yeah, I took Steel Hearts um, just mainly because nobody took them last time and uh, I wanted to take a fairly kind of aggro deck. Um, something a bit simple because um, I've, not, I've not had much sleep over the past two weeks uh, because of the, the arrival of a, a little baby boy. Um, so I uh, wanted to kind of put a, a nice, simple, low model count aggro uh, deck together. Um, I was all set and ready to go, but the uh, FAR list uh, dropped on the Thursday. Um, it didn't change my deck too much. I was... Um, rocking uh, sort of a couple of the cards that got dropped um, and then sorry just looking at this this is what my original deck looked like so um, I had ah uh, so yeah okay so so I just got confused look at that so um, the I ended up dropping um, Nightmare in the Shadows And I dropped, have I kept that? Cryptic Companion. There we go. Oh, okay, sorry, I've also got a cold as well, so I do apologise. This is going to be a very professional video. But um, those were the two that I had to drop because of the uh, FAR list. Um, it then meant I was only taking 20 Um power cards uh, which is kind of like the magic number anyway so uh, that worked out um, quite nicely but um, how did I get on um, I was hoping to win one game with Steel Hearts it was a really tough field uh, I managed to get a win and then I was schooled for the rest of the day <laughs> so, um, a lot of uh, a few misplays on my part um, mainly really good competition that I was playing against some really good players and uh, maybe Steel Hearts wasn't the best thing to pick but um, let's chat about my deck first of all and then I'll go into the, the matches that I played after that okay so uh, objectives wise as you can probably tell looking at that um, I was going for a very kind of simple aggro um, getting up in the grill of uh, my opponent and um, trying to kill them either with uh, kind of straight up attacks or ploys. Um, in terms of kind of like scoring glory, it was really dice dependent. Uh, the It just didn't seem to, things didn't seem to click how I was ho hoping they would. Um, what would I change if I was to play this deck again? I'd drop Frantic Exchange for something, for a start. Um, it's one of those cards that if your opponent knows that you've got it, they will adapt the way they play, unless they've got it themselves. Um, now it's a restricted card as well. Not that many people have pro probably got it. Oh, sorry, that's not a restricted card. Um, but uh, now it's a card that lots of people take, sorry. Um, but uh, if, uh, if they know that you've got it and it's not in their hand and they're playing it, then they will slow down the use of their ploys as well to kind of stop you from scoring that because it can be quite obvious that you've got it. Um, I Yeah, so... I'd probably try and change that, get that out of there somehow. Um, 
and solid gains as well although it does seem like a kind of an easy card to have if you get it in your opening hand that's pretty much an automatic mulligan really um, unless you've got two easy uh, surge objectives so they'd be the two that I would get rid of and I'd probably contemplate getting rid of unexpected pitfall as well um, I didn't score that as much as I thought as I was going to um, but uh, I'll be able to go into that in a bit more detail, um, particularly as I move on to the gambits now. So the gambits, uh, again, it's very aggro-y, just trying to kind of deal as much extra damage as I, as I can, um, collapse, pit trap, lethal wards, uh, encroaching shadow. Uh, Black Powder Sphere was just fun. People would, didn't expect me to have it. Uh, the, and Daylight Robbery, it just goes in all my decks now. I just I really enjoy that card. Um, I don't know if I would change any of these, really. Um, maybe get rid of Mischief, Mischievous Spirits uh, to get another kind of push card in there, perhaps. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe just to kind of stop thinking about how the other... If, if, I'm, if you're playing kind of all-out aggro maybe not thinking about what the other player is doing as much would help you out. So we kind of pick a target, try and kill it, move on to the next one, um, and just try and rack up your glory that way, perhaps. So I would probably swap out Mischief for Spirits. Um, the kind of Spectral Wings, I didn't have it in there, but after running this deck under the nose of uh, Sean, he um, kind of pointed out that if I lose the board roll then I'm screwed which is why I put Black Powder Sphere in as well um, but uh, yeah Spectral Wings was kind of quite essential as it just kind of helped out um, me getting where I needed to be. Uh, I'd probably drop Righteous Zeal too. Um, I had a lot of there's a lot of stuff here that can finish the job. Um, I have great strength and Steelhearts can kill a lot of stuff off the bat at the minute, particularly a lot of the stuff that's being played. Um, so I think Righteous Zeal might have been a wasted slot in there as well. But uh, I'd keep 100% keep Pit Trap. Um, so uh, kind of keeping my restricted cards there. But next up with regards to the upgrades, um, this is a tough one. I think I made a lot of mistakes with my upgrade choices. Uh, Fatal Repost um, was good. Uh, I think kind of keeping that in, keeping that in there was good. It was a deterrent as well. Um, great Fortitude, Great Strength, Blessed by Sigma. Keep those in. Heroic Stride is a really good card. I just forgot the reaction quite a few times, <laughs> which <laughs> did kind of bite me in the ass a little bit. Uh, Faneway Crystal. Now, I put that in there as a way to get in amongst it if I was to lose the board roll. But the minute you put Faneway Crystal on, the, and the opponent now is wise to it. It's the only way your character can move. They just snaffle up those objectives so you can't move. Um, so maybe try to find another way um, to make the guys quicker. Um, maybe get some plus movement buffs instead. Uh, Potion of Rage, definitely keep. Tome of Glories, that needs to come out. I didn't use it once. Um, it didn't really seem like a good opportunity to ever use that. Um, when you're being aggro, you've only got three models. You're very rarely kind of moving on to like an objective just to try and score Tome of Glories. So I'd probably get rid of that as well. And as you can see here, Tome of Offerings, that's kind of essential, really. Um, so uh, yeah, I think kind of a few kind of changes needed for those in those upgrades to kind of make that work. Maybe the odd amber bone weapon in there just to kind of help rack up extra um, glory points. Or I'm not I'm not sure <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I took I as I'll kind of discuss uh, how my games went. I took such a whooping <laughs> that um, it kind of made me completely rethink um, how I would play Steel Hearts in the future. But so uh, let's um, let's discuss the games, uh, how they went, and uh, maybe that a lot of the stuff that I've kind of said there will make a bit more sense. So the um, first round, uh, just getting my very professional notes. Uh, 
<laughs> in front of me here. Um, I played uh, a chap by the name of uh, Richard Baker. Um, he rocked up with Git. Uh, we were expecting a lot of Git um, to be in this particular tournament, um, mainly uh, because they're quite a versatile group. Lots of models, lots of kind of ways of being able to grab objectives. They seem to kind of do quite well out of the cards that were left. And um, I was quite concerned that this was going to be a bad matchup for me. Uh, I got very lucky. My dice were red hot in uh, this particular game. And so the first game, uh, I won 13-2. It was, I don't think I really scored many of my objectives. It was just straight up kind of murdering. Um, he played the gits quite aggressively. Uh, they weren't your kind of objective or controlly type of deck. He was kind of coming for me, but um, his dice were really cold and my dice were really hot in that first game. And I won the first game at thirteen two. So he wasn't really he wasn't even able to um, inspire kind of like any of his gits at all. And um, the second game. Um, it uh, went a little bit longer. Things his deck started to work a little bit. He won. He won the roll off, and gave me the objectives, which my, my particular deck and list did do. Or my warband don't particularly like having to come a long way to get in the fight, and that definitely definitely kind of helped him out there um and that was kind of a theme for the day as well unfortunately there wasn't really any kind of answer for it for me but um, he did you know that was a close game but he won that one 12 8 and then uh, we only had enough time to run uh, one round in the third game um I, I got quite lucky with my objectives that i drew and um i kind of won that round 6-1 uh, but uh, i was i was quite happy um Got a game against what I thought was going to be the strongest warband on the day. Uh, got a win and was in that nice comfy bubble of um, that nice comfy bubble of false sense of uh, security. That's what I'm looking for. I was in a false sense of security for the day then, and I thought, no, this maybe this is going to go really well, uh, but. Um, at the start of the day, I would have been ecstatic with one win. But when you go into a tournament and you win your first game, you start thinking, right, what if, what's next? What are we going to do? So um, what was <laughs> what was next for me was uh, old uh, Tommy uh, Convoy and his Thorns of the Briar Queen. And needless to say, this game <laughs> did not go as well as the previous one. Um, Tommy is a very, very good player. Thorns are a very strong um, war band at the start several times in the game he did kind of point out it's like oh, I just want to apologise I am taking this tournament really seriously which um, yeah it, it makes me laugh when people do say that because you know it's a tournament people enter them to take the game seriously but uh, he was he was he was a gent all the way through and um, we were kind of having a laugh at how cold my dice were in the first round um, but his I'm going to hope, because at, at the minute, the tournament is still going on. So the top four still have to play. Um, so once the tournament's finished, I do want to kind of break down that particular deck because I, I think it's going to win. No pressure, Tommy. Don't make me look like a mug. <laughs> and, and lose. But uh, that, that, that deck was really strong. Um, he played it a completely different way to anyone that I've played Thorns. So it was really interesting. Um but the first game was a whooping. I lost 25-2. Um, he killed all of my guys by the second activation in the second round. And then he just was able to snaffle up all that glory with all of his objectives. And he had keys as well, which um, I can't complain about someone having keys. If people from the kind of local scene to where I am, they know I love me a bit of keys in my deck. Uh, but the second round was a little closer. Um. I ended up losing 17-7, so a 2-0 loss, uh, but that kind of went to, that quite went to the wire. Um, if So I mentioned with regards to this card, Heroic Stride, I forgot in that game a couple of times to activate it 
and that probably kind of cost me a lot of glory and possibly the game. Um, but you, you live and learn. I've not played Steel Hearts for ages, and when you you kind of take such a beating in the first round, it messes with your head a little bit. Nearly, uh, but I missed an opportunity to send in Steelheart and potentially take out three of the uh, Chain Rasps, which would have made the score a lot different. But would I have won? Um, probably not. Probably, probably still would have lost that one. But um, yeah, it was it was a pasting. Uh, Tommy was. Um, we had a little chat about the game afterwards, and uh, Tommy kind of um, stuck a few ideas under my nose and pointed out a few things that I missed. Um, he very much enjoyed the fact that one of my steel hearts just went charging in, lobbing a hand grenade <laughs> into a group of um, uh, the the thorns. Um, Black Powder Sphere. It's just a funny card, really, to have. Um, and uh, but uh, it was a good game, and um, I do. Fingers crossed for the topic because I do think that might uh, win the tournament outright. Um, round three up against another good player, and I think if you sub to the channel, and I didn't cotton onto it until I was writing my notes um, for this video. So if you are watching, Duncan, hello. Um, the Tari Guardians, uh, I practiced against them um, sort of a couple of times against a, f a friend, and my golden rule for playing against them is. Kill your Tari. You'll win. I forgot that in this game, particularly in the second round. But um, he he long boarded me in the first round and he was able to sit at the back, he was able to score objectives, wait for me to come in and fight me on kind of his terms. Um <coughs> pardon me. I, I made a couple of mistakes in that one. Um kind of I always kind of forget that Bright Shield is probably better at hitting than Oberyn. Oberyn hits harder, Bright Shield hits more consistently. And if you are playing Steel Hearts, it's so important to remember that. So um, there was an instance where I put all my eggs in the Oberyn basket when realistically I should have done it in the Bright Shield one. But you know, you live and learn. And then in the second game, uh, so I lost the first game 19-6. And then the second game against uh, Duncan, I lost. It was a bit closer, 15-11. And again, I forgot my golden rule. I had an opportunity to kill Diltari. And I, thought, oh, I just got, got a little bit confused and just concentrated on what was in my hand and not what was happening on the board. Uh, but uh, Duncan deservedly won 15-11. Um, and um, he kind of pushed on bit further up the board there I uh, had a nice chat with Duncan afterwards about the game um, I don't really think about boards if I'm being honest um, and that's probably one of the big differences between kind of top tier players and like media like Tottenham's like me <laughs> I'm a bit of a Spurs when it comes to Underworlds um, I just kind of briefly look at the boards and go yeah that looks alright I'll go with that one uh, but it's I can, yeah, he pointed out, you know, you've got three, you're playing an aggro deck, you've got three, why did you never play this board? And it was just, I need to look more into that. So if there was a, anything to kind of take away from that game with Duncan, um, specifically, it's I need to look at the boards more, um, kind of weigh up. And I have pre-prepared in my head, if I lose the board roll, I'm picking this board. If I win the board roll, it needs to be this board. Because I don't do that enough. I just kind of quite blase. I go, yeah, that'll do. But uh, yeah, Duncan deserved a deserved win there. And uh, absolute um, pasting again. Final game of the day um, was some old school Shades by action, which was brilliant. Um, if Those of you that kind of know me from the local scene, uh, I season one, I loved Skaven. I won two bits of glass with them. Um, pre That was prior to any kind of um far list or anything like that so you're having all the the stupid ridiculous cards that were around back then so uh, i was really looking forward to that i must admit at the back of my head i was thinking i'm gonna smash these rats and it didn't quite go uh, to plan um graham was a really good player and that was a really really good 
deck that he had there. Uh, it was a nice kind of mixture of um, stabby and control. It was it was good, and I highly approve. Um, so the first game was a, a draw, 16-16. Um, he did kind of tear away a little bit, and then I was able to kind of catch up with just murder, basically. Second game, 7-11 um, loss. And then the third game was a really close uh, third game and uh, a 7-9 loss. <coughs> Pardon me. A 7-9 loss and um, Graham goes on to win 2-0. But uh, I really liked Graham's um, deck that he had. And I think the three decks that I lost to are probably the way that the meta is going to kind of shift towards because they didn't really. So the from what I can remember, the Thorns and the Skaven didn't really concentrate on one particular type of way to win. So it was a kind of, kind of flex, two good flex decks. Um, Duncan's deck was, again, a bit of a flex deck, but it was protect the boss. Protect the boss, make sure the boss is still alive at the end. And so we put the lost pages on. So I think we're going to see a lot more lost pages. I think we're going to see a lot more keys as well. Um, so if people can put on a few keys in their deck, uh, like Tommy did, that's stuff that we're going to see a lot more. And um, quite interestingly, we'll discuss that next. So um, quite interestingly, the spread for this tournament was was nuts. And uh, we'll we'll chat about that now. Um, but uh, just to, to sign off um, with regards to Steel Hearts, I am probably not going to take them to the next uh, tournament. Um, it just it just didn't work, uh, unfortunately. But uh, they were well represented, which was surprising. But we'll uh, we'll get to that bit now. So it is still too early to say what the meta is. Um, it was two days after a tournament. I think it even dropped on a Thursday afternoon, the FAR list, which meant people had didn't have much time at all to um, change their decks, really. And it was quite interesting when I was chatting to the people that I played, whether or not that was their first choice list. Um, so I'm quite intrigued as to what that's like over the whole scale so if you were in that tournament do let me know in the comments and um, whether that was your first choice or not but um the kind of breakdown of the list of all the lists there were twenty six I think there were forty two people in the tournament forty two or forty six um oh my maths is awful but um, just looking at the notes now, so the, with regards to the Shades by Warband, um, Steelhearts, there were three of us, which was which did surprise me. Um, you know, no one took Steelhearts last time. Maybe that because of that, a few other people were like, ah, oh, let's, let's give them a spin, why not? Um, one Skellies, um, four Skaven, two Fast Striders. And that is it. That was it from them. Still double figures, still 10. Um, no Malgors, no Orcs, again, poor little buggers. Um, no Reavers, no Chosen Axes. Um, again, it goes back to what I said in the previous video. Uh, these these Warbands are going to slowly die off a little bit. The FAR list has helped them, um, which I'll get to shortly. Um, but it's very much a... It's just a natural transition in the game that the, the, we're going to see these guys a lot this uh the night vault guys we had one thorns three curse breakers five gits a molog two yultari two thundrix and one eyes of the night again no god sworn i made my thoughts clear on the god sword in the last video um i think everyone was expecting a lot more thorns uh but Git seemed to be kind of where people were leaning towards. Um, Eyes of the Nine, quite interestingly, did really well. I know the person 
from what people were saying in Discord, the person who plays Eyes of the Line plays Eyes of the Line quite a lot. Um, but uh, it was quite interesting there. And so in total, um, 15, I think that adds up to 9. Yeah, 15. Again, I think a fair representation, a fair expected um, number of wall bands from that. And then the rest, uh, we had uh, four scathe, um, four despoilers, and uh, one Lady Harrows, two Man Trappers, two Worm Spat, four Rippers, one Grimwatch. So there were more Steel Heart War Bands than Grimwatch. What a time to be alive. It's, I think um, Grimwatch have been hit quite hard, particularly by that far list. I don't think they're going to go away. I just think they're going to come back differently. Probably a, a defensive aggro war warband if that makes sense so they won't go charging in but they will try and hold that line and protect what they've got i think <coughs> i think they're still <coughs> they're still going to come back but uh, the spoilers um yeah four four of those people have been looking at the spoilers objectives now and it's like oh okay they have their own versions of some of the stuff that was restricted. However, as a war band, they're not as strong as some others that would use those universal versions. So they could kind of climb up the tier list a little bit over the next few weeks. And uh, so no Iron Souls again. Um, again, it's a shame because they're, they're, they're fun, they're aggro -y. I thought about taking iron souls over steel hearts however when i was trying to put the decks to, the deck together i wanted a, an easier deck to play um, because the lack of sleep i've had over the past couple of weeks and steel hearts um trumped what iron souls had to offer um i may try and play iron souls in the league that starts in a few weeks i don't know we'll, we'll you know we'll see because something else might be coming very soon with regards to that. But um, it's just too early to say what's going to dominate and what isn't. Uh, so many different warbands were kind of on display. And quite interestingly, from what I remember, the top eight was pretty crazy. There was, in the top eight, there was eight different war bands, which is great, which is such a really good thing. Um, variety is what kind of keeps a game going and keeps people coming back. And so uh, Wormsback got there, Gits got there, Harrow's got there, Thorns got there, Guardians got there, um, Scathe, Eyes of the Nine, well done that man, and Skaven. So... Two of those people were people that I lost to. Um, I did lose to a Skaven deck as well. So um, kind of look at that, what you will. Um, there's Harrows are still quite strong, um, but Eyes of the Nine getting in there, Scathe getting in there. Uh, it's it's really kind of, it, it's just great that there's eight different warbands there. Um, I don't want to talk about the top four just yet because they are just waiting to start their games now um i'm gonna break down those decks as long as we can see them as long as the, the guys are happy for me to do that as well um when they become available but uh, what are your thoughts it's it's a bit of a wild west meta at the minute um so much kind of going on out there and uh, sorry just distracted by a van i'm sorry <laughs> um, so much kind of going on um, out there at the minute do you think it will settle at all over the next few weeks because obviously we've got two more war bands that are due out which possibly are coming next month um so is it still just going to be crazy are people just going to be like ah oh, screw it i'm not going to take anything seriously i'm just going to try and make put together fun stuff and see what happens over the next kind of few weeks um who knows because we don't know what the orcs and the other ones that i can't remember i 
can't remember what the other ones are. The orbs and the other ones are going to, to bring to the table. Nothing's been spoiled about them yet, just the models. Um, we can assume that the orcs are going to be quite aggro, but what are the what are the other folks going to be? Are they going to be sort of controlly? Is what they're bringing to the table, did that influence the far list at all, do you think? Let me know your thoughts. How are you going to be playing um, Underworlds over the next few weeks? Um, sticking to your guns and kind of tweaking a deck you've already had, or are you using this as an opportunity to kind of push on, try and build something and play something new? Uh, I've got a league starting soon um, on Vassal. No idea what I'm going to play. <laughs> um, and then there's the Vassal tournament at the end of July. Um, we should have the Orcs by then. Which if they are, I'm going to take the Orcs. Because I bloody love them. I love Orcs. Um, if not, who knows? Who knows what I'm going to take. But uh, if you want to get your kind of chops into some Vassal Underworlds, I'm going to put a, a link to the Discord channel. It's a really good community. Um, all sorts of stuff going on in there at the moment. Uh, as well as tournaments, they had a design your own warband competition, which I'm going to try and do a video on. Just want to make sure I can get permission to do that off of the guys first. But uh, yeah, jump on there, play some games, um, get your underworlds fix um, in these crazy times of lockdown. So uh, what are your thoughts on this kind of Wild West meta that we're in at the moment? Um, how are you going to be sort of playing over the next few weeks? Yeah tweaking the war bands that you've been using using this as an opportunity to play something new or are you just going to kind of hold fire wait for the dust to settle and then uh, kind of build it build your next deck based on what's going on around you um always fascinates me how people kind of act in this kind of sort of scenario when a meta is just phew, when there isn't one no one knows what the hell is going on um so uh, yeah let me know what you think do, a, do subscribe to the channel and uh, yeah hopefully uh, see you again real soon and uh, apologies for the cough <laughs> cheers <laughs>